animatedanatomy.com. Okay, so in this lesson, I will talk about the posterior compartment of the forearm muscles. That is, this here compartment. There is actually uh, two groups here, and that is the group of superficial muscles and the group of deep muscles. We will start by the group of superficial muscles. The first muscle in this group that I will talk about is the brachioradialis. The brachioradialis is the muscle that was questioned on my anatomy exam a few years ago. I got the question and I knew everything. I knew the origin and, and I knew the insertion. However, I did not know the name of the group of the muscles that uh, brachioradialis belongs to. And actually, the group of these muscles was, was called brachioradial group. That was another term for this group and I did not know it. So my professor deducted one point. Now let's get to the origin and insertion of this muscle. The origin of this muscle is the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. You can see that right here. Uh, we have the lateral epicondyle here and then the ridge above the epicondyle. Of course, the ridge is not clearly visible here. That's why you can watch that in part of my software where I talk about the bones. Now this is where the origin of the muscle is. You can see that from this ridge. Then it goes all the way down and it inserts on the distal radius or the radial styloid process. It inserts here. This is radius and it inserts here on the styloid process of radius. The nerve that innervates this muscle is the radial nerve. And of course the action of this muscle would be the flexion of the forearm. If you can see where it inserts and where it comes from, it's obvious when this muscle contracts, it's not going to extend the forearm, it's going to flex it. Next muscle that I will talk about is the extensor carpi radialis longus. It is this muscle here. It also has the origin on the lateral supracondylar ridge here. And the insertion of this muscle is the second metacarpal bone here. It is innervated also by the radial nerve, just like the previous muscle, and, but the action is quite different. It serves to extend the wrist joint and also to abduct the hand at the wrist. So if you look at it from here, you can see it's not inserting on this side, but on the other side. So when it contracts, it's going to extend the wrist joint. It's going to pull the hand up. But also, if we look at it from here, if it contracts, it's going to I'll pull the wrist laterally, so it means it's going to um, abduct the hand at the wrist joint. The muscle that antagonized this muscle was the flexor carpi radialis muscle. Here is the flexor carpi radialis muscle, this muscle here. Uh, then also we have one more muscle here in the mobile wand, and it's the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Now another muscle in this group that I will talk about is also extender carpi radialis, but this one is not longus, but it's the brevis. It is the short one. It has the origin on the common extensor tendon here, uh, more precisely the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and then the, it inserts on the third, the base of the third metacarpal bone. It is innervated by the deep branch of the radial nerve. It serves as an extender and an adductor of the hand at the wrist joint. So the function is pretty much the same like the radius muscle we had. It is just called brevis and this, the other one was longus and also the origin is slightly different and the insertion is slightly different. Now the group of three muscles that I just talked about is also called the mobile wad. It is also called the radial group or the lateral compartment. This is the official thing, not what my professor is asking. Now, another muscle that I will talk about here is the extensor digitorum. The extensor digitorum has the origin here on the lateral epicondyle, the common extensor tendon, and the insertion of this muscle is from second to fifth phalange. It is innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve, that is the continuation of the deep branch of the radial nerve. Remember, these muscles were also innervated by the radial nerve. So here we have the continuation of the deep branch, 
and it is called the posterior interosseous nerve. Uh, it serves for the extension of the hand and the fingers. So the antagonist of this muscle is right here. It is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Note that we have the flexor digitorum superficialis because we also have the deep one down there below. You cannot see it because of this one. However, on the back side, the extensor was only one. There were no superficial or deep extensors. However, there is one extensor here. It has the origin just like this one on the lateral epicondyle and a common extensor tendon. However, the insertion is only at the uh, the insertion is at the extensor expansion located at the base of the proximal phalanx of the finger on the dorsal side. Now, the extensor expansion, just imagine that as a uh, connected tissue here that serves for the insertion of these tendons and phalanges. Okay, it's nothing complicated, it's just a connected tissue and it serves for the insertion of these uh, tendons with the phalanges. We don't have the extensor expansion here modeled, but it's just a connected tissue, it's nothing complicated. Now, uh, the function of this muscle is quite obvious. It extends the uh, little finger at all joints. Now we finally come to the last muscle in this group that I will talk about, and that is the extensor carpi ulnaris. That is the extensor carpi ulnaris. It has the origin just like the rest of these muscles here on the humerus. And oh, this is the ulna. Okay, uh, now, uh, okay, humerus. It has the origin on the common extensor tendon and on the lateral epicondyle. The insertion of this muscle is the fifth metacarpal bone here, and it's innervated also by the posterior interosseous nerve. It serves to extend and to adduct the wrist. Now, remember, we had these two muscles here. The flexor carpi radialis brevis and longus. They serve for the abduction. However, the flexor carpi ulnaris here that inserts on the fifth metacarpal bone serves for the adduction of the wrist. It also has one more antagonist on the other side and that is the flexor carpi ulnaris. Here is the flexor carpi ulnaris, this muscle here. Okay and it's antagonizing our muscle here that is extending the wrist. This one is flexing the wrist. Now I will talk about the group of these muscles here on the posterior compartment because this was all a group of superficial muscles, right? Now beneath these muscles there are deep muscles of the posterior compartment. Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe or like my video.